Andrea with The Whole Kit and Caboodle. If you're new to us, welcome! I'm so excited to spend the next bit of time with you. I started The Whole Kit and Caboodle in 2008, specializing in professionally designed scrapbooking kits. We now offer a wide array of products, including the industry's leading solid color paper, My Colors Cardstock. I'm standing in the My Colors Cardstock virtual classroom right now. Be sure to take a peek at our website once we're through here. This video is appearing to you live, but actually I'm live at my computer right now and ready to answer any questions you may have in the comments section. So grab your page kit. I'm gonna go whip up today's cruise drink of the day, the Paloma, and then we'll be ready to scrap. Alright, are we ready to get this party started? First I'm going to show you what you need um, for your basic supplies as we're going through this design. You'll need um, adhesive that will work for smaller pieces. I prefer to use a liquid glue when it comes to the small pieces, but whatever works for you. If you're using the Xyron or any kind of uh, liquid adhesive for the smaller pieces, and then some kind of tape runner that you would use for our larger pieces. We definitely need some scissors and you will need a paper trimmer. I can't scrap without my tweezers, so I always have those on hand when I am scrapbooking. These are the EK Success tweezers. You will need a ruler, a pencil, and then if you like the effects of the chalking inks, you will also need a set of the chalk inks. So we recommended for this class the rose petal and the cactus. However, they have both been uh, since discontinued. So we have substituted the strawberry milkshake and the palm tree. I'll show you how to use these if you've never had the chance to use them before. I love the effects of chalking inks, but it's just a personal preference. So you're gonna be perfectly fine if you don't have them or prefer not to use them. Your layout's gonna be equally as gorgeous, so don't worry about that. All right, so if you pull out the pieces of your Family Fun Times page kit, what we're going to do with this is I'm gonna show you fun ways to use enamel dots. I am a huge fan of enamel dot embellishments. And this is what I mean by enamel dots. Um, so they're just, uh, to me, like little candy-like embellishments. Um, many, many scrapbooking manufacturers now have their own version of these. We are specifically going to use Echo Parks and they are included in your kit. Know that everybody's colors are going to be a little different and it's okay, they're all still made to coordinate even though they could be a little different from the sample itself. If you're new to our designs, you will notice here that every one of our kits will come with a color printout of what the design looks like. And of course, this is just a guide. Uh, you need to personalize it how it fits your photos the best because our photos are the focus of a page design, correct? So this is just to give you kind of a, an example of how it can go together. Your kits also come with really detailed instructions as you see here. So it will give you a step by step by step to the eighth of an inch if you want to put it together exactly. So you also have this in your kit if you prefer to follow along with the written instructions. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. This first thing that we're going to use is the yellow piece of paper. So we're gonna start with this yellow piece of paper. Now that yellow piece of paper is already cut to size for you. 
So there's nothing you need to do to that uh, to get it down to size. It's already at the correct size. In your baggie, you'll notice that you have a little six by six clear bag that has some white die cuts. We are going to use these as patterns. So we won't physically be adhering them to our page, but we're going to use them as patterns. So I need you to pull out the triangle. And just for ease, we're gonna leave everything else inside of there. I want you to just pull out that triangle. And what I want you to do is we're gonna lay the triangle flush to the top of the page and two and three quarters inch from the left edge. So measure over two and three quarters inches, two and three quarters inches. And we're gonna put our triangle so that the left tip of our triangle is where we drew that little pencil mark. And then really, really lightly, I want you to draw along the left and along the right edge of our triangle. Okay, and then that's all that you need this piece for. It was just as a pattern so that we could get that traced there at the top. So then you can put that aside because you will no longer need it. So now what I want you to do is I want you to take your scissors and cut from the center of your triangle down to the point. So we're just going to, and if it's not exactly in the center, it's okay. We're just gonna eyeball this one. You're welcome to measure, them and measure it if you like, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. And I'm gonna cut down to the point of our triangle. Now, so that it's not so bulky, what we're going to do next, we're going to just snip just a little bit off of the edge just like that. And we're gonna do it again on this side. So see what I did there? So we have our, our cut that went straight down the middle and then I'm gonna rip just a little bit off the edges. And again, that's just to get, eliminate some of the bulk on this next step here. I really loved this side of the pattern paper as well. And obviously when you glue this down, there's no way to see the other side. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to see that gorgeous side of the black and white checkered. So we're going to just like two, three times, we're going to roll the paper really loosely. It does not have to be exact. Don't worry if you know one end is thicker than the other. It does not matter. I really do, um, you might even wanna use a bone folder here to really get that crisp so that it will lay a little more flat um, in your page protector. And then we're gonna do it again on the other side. So all we're doing is just rolling that paper using that drawn line as our guide just like that. All right, first step done, you made it. <laughs> All right, so for the next step here, we have our 12 by 12 sheet of paper. So I need you to cut off the barcode strip and that is the only thing that you are going to use your paper trimmer for. The only thing we're gonna use the paper trimmer for there is to cut off that barcode strip. And our yellow piece of paper is gonna get adhered to the center. Now there is a little bit of trick here when you are adhering the yellow piece to the floral in the background, which by the way, doesn't that match just gorgeously? I really love how all of these papers coordinate together. But if you want, you could later slip a photo underneath this here. And I'll pause just a second, just so you could see on the screen what it would look like if you added a photo there in that triangle piece that we just uh, cut and folded over.
So if you want to be able to add a photo to that piece later, when you go to place your adhesive, I would only go along the outer edges and I wouldn't put any adhesive around here. It's gonna go in the center of our floral sheet. And again, I wouldn't put any adhesive here. That way you can slip a photo underneath later if you choose to do that. That would just give you kind of another space. You could also use that to put your journaling, which would be uh, fabulous as well. Um, because we do see this floral all the way around the outer edge. So it, I think it would be perfectly beautiful to go ahead and slip your photo or your journaling there. All right, the next thing we have in our page kit is that striped piece of paper. So we're going to adhere that striped piece of paper there on that right edge. I love striped papers in all of my page designs. To me, if you ever struggle on how to put colors together, this is um, you know, already been created by a professional artist. They have said this hue of blue matches this hue of pink, matches this hue of yellow. So now we can use papers that are exactly that same hue of those same colors and easily put all of these colors together to create this page, which is exactly what we have done here. If you notice, we've pulled the black when we fold it over our piece here, the yellows are exact. Um, I just love the way stripes work when putting together page designs. All right, so we're just gonna adhere that vertically about right there. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is in, in this baggie here, when you put together our page kits, if you are, again, if you're new to us, typically they come in two page spreads. So this would be the left side of a spread and then the kit would also come with the right side. All of the die cuts are going to be bagged separately. So all of the die cuts for the left page would be in its own bag. All of the die cuts for the right page would be in their own bag. And that's because our kits do come with a lot of pieces. We do specialize in a lot of dimension. We always include 3D embellishments in our kits and then a lot of die cuts. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible so that you can keep all of this straight and all of this together. But in your bag of die cuts, I want you to pull out that pink and navy word family. And I just leave everything else in there so that I don't lose it. So we have the two layers of the word family. If you like to ink, when I am inking something like this die cut, I use the ink pad itself. Um, again, using the powder puff um, from Quick Quotes. It is a really soft because it is a chalking ink. So when I'm something like this, I just do direct. You're welcome to use a dauber if you're more comfortable. And there's no rule that says that you have to go all the way around the piece, right? I'm only going to ink at the bottom. To me, it kind of gives the ombre effect. And I just love how it just kind of adds like a little shadow, a little more dimension, rather than it just being just a flat piece of cardstock. We do use uh, My Colors cardstock in all of our page kits. To me, it's definitely the leading uh, solid color paper in the industry. And we do carry all of their canvas, their glimmer, and their embossed dot lines. So then once we get the bottom of that inked, we are going ahead and glue the pink to our navy blue. Just gonna run some adhesive and glue that pink to the blue layer. To me, this is where the tweezers come in. It's just so much easier for me to grip it if I'm using the tweezers. 
When we go to and hear the word family, if you notice, I've used the divot of our triangle and lined it up with the divot in our Y. That's how you know exactly where that piece is going to go. So we're gonna line up the divot of the triangle with the divot of the Y. For this, since it's a little bit thicker there, I'm gonna go ahead and just use my dry adhesive. And again, lining that up just like that. All right, we have um, included the mats that are already pre-cut. When it comes to a class, we've pre-cut these just so that um, when all is said and done, you can be completely finished with this at the end of class. But it's totally your personal preference. If you want, you could just put just a little dab in the center. That way it's there and it's not gonna get lost, but you could easily remove it later if you wanted to. So this is totally personal preference. If you want to put down the photo mats or if you wanna wait until you see exactly what photos you are going to have. But just for the sake of the class instruction here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put down both of these photo mats. You'll notice that this paper is textured on one side and solid on the other. I always do textured side up. Again, that's just a preference of mine. It's the one reason I can't go digital. I love the look of, of the canvas texture, so I always use the textured side up. It's also the way to figure out when you're putting our die cuts together, which side is meant to be up, because we always do the textured side up when we're cutting those. All right, so the next thing we're going to do here, we're going to go back into our baggie that has our, our patterns here. And we're gonna pull out that circle. So we're gonna use the circle for this. And if you notice here on our final page, I have some enamel dots that are circled there that highlight above the FAM and family. Now, maybe you're better than me and you could get those enamel dots perfectly circular in that position there. Mine would for sure look like an oval. So we're gonna cheat the system a little bit, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to take your circle pattern and we're going to lay it about where we want it. Now, if you're worried if it's going to move, you could use some temporary adhesive. You could use a little piece of washi tape or a little piece of painter's tape. I'm just going to hold it down um, and just use that as my guide there to adhere my enamel dots. So um, I'm gonna use all of these uh, reddish pink ones here. Again, everybody's enamel dots could be a little different, but that's the ones that I'm going to use here. And I'm going to, again, use the circle as my guide. So at first, I don't really press them down so I can make sure they're kind of all evenly spaced out before I give them that final push there. So I'm just gonna just barely put them down that way in case I want to move them later. I'm gonna move that over just a hair so I can get some down in that little spot there. So if you don't push them all the way down, then you could easily move them around um, at the very end in case you needed to rearrange that spacing. There are some enamel dots that are a little more flat. And with those, you could use your tweezers. However, I have found with the ones that are rounded at the top, it makes it a little more difficult to handle them with the tweezers and I just rearrange them there with my fingernail. And we're just gonna continue to go around that circle. 
using that entire row of enamel dots. They are such a fun and expensive little way, I think, to add some dimension to your page. I have heard of people making their own enamel dots. Um, you could do things uh, like use uh, fingernail polish and allow it to dry, put it on wax paper. I have heard of people making their own, that way you could create any color that you want at all. Life's too short, I would rather buy them already made. <laughs> All right, and we do sell a name of that as well as on our, on our website. So there you go. Once you have them all in place, I'm going to go ahead and push them down. We remove our circle, and now we have that perfectly circular shape in our enamel dots there. All right, and we no longer need that circle pattern, so we're going to set that aside. Underneath the family, we have that hashtag fun times there. So in your baggie, I'm going to pull out just what I need. So I'm going to pull out the hashtag fun times. I think I have finally come to the stage in life that I do call it a hashtag and not a pound sign, right? We're going to pull out all of these little pieces. All right, then I'm going to stick these back in there just again so I don't lose them. For me, I always lay it out first and then I glue them down. I realize that does take a little more time. But that way I can make sure that it's all spaced out exactly how it's going to fit. And again, look for the texture side to be up. That's how you know that you have the right side of the letter. Sometimes it's hard, you know, with a T or with a U or an I to know exactly. So we always look for that texture side. And I'm going to lay them in their place. And then once I get them in their place, I'm going to go ahead and glue them down. Now, when I glue them down, what I do is, um, you can run this through a Xyron and it would work just as fine. The, the Xyron's never really worked for me personally. So again, I like the liquid adhesive, but it would take a long time to pick up each letter, dab it on, Put it down, right? So what I do is take a scrap piece of paper, just put a little ball of liquid glue there, and then I'm going to really gently pick up some of that adhesive and put that letter down. Just pick up just a little bit of that adhesive, put that letter down. It just goes so much quicker you do, um, if you're working with the Helmar glue like I do here, it does dry pretty fast. So you would need to make this kind of a, a pretty quick process or all of that ball of glue is going to dry on you. But again, I think it just makes it so much easier to glue all of those individual letters. Just a few more here. And again, I could never do this without my EK Success tweezers, and we do offer those on our website as well. We will put it up at the, um, at the end of this class. We will put it on the screen, but know that you do did a, get a discount for watching this class. You'll get 10% off the entire website, and that coupon will be good for an entire week. And that code is crop and cruise all put together um, again and we'll put that on our website at the end of this instruction here all right then I'm gonna put this aside so that I don't put my arm in it <laughs> and there we have our family fun times so now we have the rest of our our die cuts that we're gonna put here so we have some flowers and some hearts. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull all of the rest of these out of our baggie here. 
And I'm gonna put that aside. Again, if you like to ink, I did ink one more piece and I did ink that green circle. Now in your instructions, it will say to use cactus, um, which is the color that I used on the original sample, but Quick Quotes has si since discontinued that color. So here I'm using palm tree. So palm tree is gonna be a good substitution. When you're working with powder puff inks, my rule of thumb is that the ink pad needs to be about two shades darker than the paper that you are inking. Because when it first goes on, it is gonna go on pretty dark, but it will lighten just a bit. If you're worried, use a dauber that will make it go on even lighter. Because remember, you can always add to the ink. It's harder to remove. So you can always go back on and dab on some more ink. So if you're worried, about uh, the amount, uh, I would use a dauber. So once we have that, and if you notice again, like I just inked the bottom, I just inked the one side here. Um, the purpose is to kind of create a shadow. So it would be like if the sun was shining, it was casting a shadow to kind of make it look dimensional. That's why I only did one side. And then there's three layers that make up that heart. So we're going to adhere all of those together. Again, I love, love, love layers. I am a graphic designer by trade. So I think all of those principles kind of, kind of come through as I'm putting um, all of these designs together. I am the primary designer for the company, and then we have seven other employees that work in-house, and they put together the kits. They cut the pattern papers, the solid color cardstocks, and get together all of the embellishments. And then we have about eight employees that work from home, and they work on all of the die cuts. So we do remain uh, really busy and really blessed during this time. I'm gonna adhere all of those layers together. We have quite a few of our page kits on our uh, website currently. And again, don't forget to use that 10% discount code. All right, we have one more flower here. And again, don't forget to look for the texture side. We want the texture side up. I don't worry about putting a lot of adhesive. If you notice, I just kind of dabbed it there. As long as it's gonna to stick to each other, it's not gonna go anywhere once it's in your page protector, right? I don't see the need to add a whole lot of, whole lot of adhesive there. All right, we also have some flourishes that were in the large baggie. Now we do have a flourish that was in our pattern baggie as well, but that one's still in there, so we're not gonna use that one quite yet. So we also have these flourishes, and what I am using these flourishes for, again, the focus of our page should be our photos. So if you look, I've positioned this so that it not only follows the curve of the Y, but it also points you right into the photo there. Actually, I think I'm gonna put that one there. I think that one fits just a little better. See how the, the curve of that flourish is gonna lead the eye right exactly where we want it to go. And then you can kind of see where all of these little pieces go as well. It's kind of gonna depend where you put your photos, but you can kind of guesstimate where you would want to put all of these pieces. So it's gonna be something like that. All right, we do wanna leave just a tiny bit of room. We do have a technique that we're going to do here with our enamel dots and here with our enamel dots. So we wanna make sure we have room for that. But once we have those laid out and kind of eyeballed where you want them to go, we're gonna adhere all of those pieces. 
Now again, as I said before, this doesn't have to be totally covered in adhesive. So I'm just gonna go down the center of that flourish and then just a little bit on the tails to ensure that it stays down. And we're going to put that along the Y pointing there to our photo. Now, if it overlaps the photo, we don't want adhesive there. So in case you wanna slip that photo underneath, if it covers it at all, we wanna make sure there's no adhesive where the flourish covers the photo mat. All right, I'm gonna use my runner for these. All right. Just a little bit in the center here. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and do this flourish here. And again, I'm just gonna run it down the center and just along those little tails to make sure those little tails stay down. I'm gonna slip that under a petal, I think. Oops. All right. And then we have our last two flowers. And there we go, just like that. And again, if you notice, all of the colors of our die cuts, I've pulled from the striped pattern paper. So I've used that same hue of pink, that same hue of the reddish pink there, um, the light blue that's in there. I've used all of those hues to create all of our die cuts. And the reason why it works so beautifully is because of that striped paper there. All right, just a few more steps. We do need our circle again. So if we go back to our circle pattern that we used here, we're going to, if you look at the final example here, see how we have the curve here? Same thing, we're gonna do just what we did here, we're going to do it down here. So I'm gonna Use that as my guide. Take my enamel dots. Again, you can use any color you want. They're all gonna be a little different. I'm gonna use this light blue here. If you notice, I kind of always start in the center and work my way around. There's really no rhyme or reason because I'm barely putting them down and they could be moved. So it doesn't really matter if you want to start in the middle if you want to start at the end. And we're just going to follow that arc there. Oops. And go all the way around that circle. And just a couple more here. And I think there's room for one tiny more. All right, and once I have them where I want them, we'll go in just a little bit here. Then you'll notice that they're very, very, very forgiving. As long as you haven't used all your pressure to put them down, you can easily move them around. Then once I have them in their location, then I make sure that I push them down. Isn't that so fun, so cute? All right, one last te technique I wanted to show you here is remember we have that last flourish that was in our pattern baggie. So if you look at our final example, I wanted to put our enamel dots kind of in that flourish pattern. But again, it's hard for me to just kind of eyeball that. So we're going to use this as our guide. So what I have done 
is I'm going to lay the flourish how it fits here. And I'm going to use my um, paper piercer or my tweezers in this case. And I'm going to poke a hole along the stem of the flourish. And we're going to go, you know, every half inch or so. You don't want to go, there's no need to go like side by side, but about every half inch all the way down the stem. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this upper flourish here. Again, going about every half an inch. And we want to go through just enough so that it pierces the yellow paper. There's no need for it to go all the way through. We're just going to use this as a guide of where to put our enamel dots because we wanted to go down the stem, so it's hard to know how to draw that, right? So if you have a funny shape like this, now when you pull that away, you will be able to see the indentation, the little piercings there of our flourish from where we use that as our guide. So I am going to use that as my guide to put all of these enamel dots here. And I used two different colors. Again, whatever, whatever colors that you want to use there work for you. I'm gonna do the blue and the black. And again, I am just going to put them loosely there. And I'm gonna go every other color, working my way all the way through the tip there. And again, because of that, that indentation, I know exactly where those need to go. You know, kind of no guessing, all that hard work has been done for me. Let's do a black one. Nope. Actually, let's do the big one side by side there. Again, they are very forgiving. All right, and then we're going to go all the way up and do that little curly cue there. And I'm just following the indentations that I made from just gently poking those holes. It's making it easy for me to follow and not have to use any artistry on where all of those would go. And voila, we have them in that perfect little florist shape. Um, and it was all done really easily just by using a die cut pattern and some kind of paper piercer. We do have just a few more of these left over. So if you wanted to fill in some of the insides of these flowers, maybe. So we're just gonna just kind of have fun with those. We have them, we might as well use them all, right? Go around the center of that flower. Put a blue. There we go. And then I'm going to add a black one, I think. Just like that. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and put some pink ones here in the center of this one. Maybe we'll add some big ones on the side. Again, just have fun. This is where kind of your, your creativity can come into your page. And you can finish that however, however you want. All right, perfect. And voila, there we go, our finished page. What do you think? If you do like to work in double page spreads, we do have what's called a supplement kit. So this is the page that would go to the right of our class page. 
So if you're interested in that, in your handout um, from your class kit, it has all of my contact information here. This supplement is only available to you for taking this class. So they're not listed on the website because we wanted to make sure that these were sold only to you and not sold out to someone who hasn't taken the class. So just shoot me an email or if you place an order with us in the comment section, if you would put in there, please add the Family Fun Times supplement, we'll gladly take care of it for you there as well. But that way you would have a two page spread um, that would coordinate and they would go side by side in your album. Here we've picked up you know, the same striped paper, the same florals, the same the same yellows. We've also included another set of enamel dots that you will use to complete this page as well. So everything you need would come included in this and it will come with very detailed written instructions for you to put them together. you enjoyed just a little taste of our scrapbooking kits. My two favorite things working in the scrapbooking industry are teaching and getting to know fellow scrappers, which made Cruise and Crop the perfect fit. Last year, we offered our very first cruise and it sold out in only a few days. The demand was so overwhelming that we also booked the following cruise. And wouldn't you know it, that one sold out as well. Scrapping, food, sand, sun, how can that be bad, right? Check out some of these fun photos from our two cruises. During last year's Cruise and Crop, we gave each participant an entire 14-page cruise-themed scrapbooking kit, as well as the coordinating Doodlebug album. Here's what it looked like. I taught four of the pages during the cruise and the rest of the cropping time, I was in the room and ready to help whenever someone needed. We also set up a small store on board. We still have three of the cruise albums available. If you're interested, hop over to our website and search 14 page cruise scrapbook with album. Lastly, I know we're all going through cruise withdrawal right now. So if you need to get your fix and have something to look forward to, book your next cruise and crop with us, September, 2021. Here are the details. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you next September. And as always, happy scrapping.